Hey everyone, uh, this is Davis. Uh, it's been probably many years since I last posted a video, but I really want to get into it again. And so my goal is to post a video each week, uh, maybe more, maybe less, depending on how it goes, but the minimum is going to be once a week. Uh, hopefully I can keep that up. Uh, I just want to do it for one year. Uh, the, I guess the main goal, at least for now, would be to, I want to get this channel to become monetized. And as far as I know, uh, how to do that is you need to have 1,000 subscribers, currently at 83, and you need 4,000 public watch hours. I'm not sure if that's just period, uh, ever in life, uh, because I'm pretty sure I have more than that. Um, because I had one video that I posted a while ago that was pretty successful. Maybe that's 4,000 in a year, something like that. I, I think there's some criteria. Um, not sure about the specifics, but that's, that's, my, that's the primary goal. Uh, hopefully I can get that done in a year. Uh, we shall see. Um, the purpose of this channel is I want to share just stock picks with you. Um, more specifically, uh, stock recaps of the week. Uh, so let's just go into right away the stocks that I've chosen, at least at this moment. We have AMD. That's the main one. I feel like that's probably going to be the stock that everyone's going to want to see and learn about at least most of the time. Uh, then we have Click and MDC. Those are the stocks that I'm gonna be discussing most frequently, at least uh, for the near term. That may change over time, uh, but for now, uh, those are the stocks that I'm going to be doing recaps on. And the reason why I'm choosing those ones is because I feel like uh, all the other stocks have been taken. Uh, that's Probably not true, but just based off of the, the YouTubers that I watch that do financial advice and uh, kind of do a recap show, I uh, have not seen them do these stocks specifically. So that's why I've taken it upon myself that I saw something in these three companies that made me want to invest in them without hearing really anything from the other people that I watch. So. I did a little research and I put some money into them. And so for me to know that my money's being utilized safely and without worry, I've been doing research on them on a weekly basis. I'll just see what's, what's the latest news on them. And then I'll just make a couple snippets here, just like I've done in this Excel spreadsheet and just kind of go through what's going on. And for these companies specifically, I'm seeing good news, which is good. And that, that shows me that I've chosen some good stocks, especially at this moment. We'll just continue tracking them over, you know, on a weekly basis. I don't expect anything crazy to happen on a weekly basis. But if something does come up, you know, I'll be aware of it and pretty uh, in the now with it, too. And that's kind of the main thing. You want to be as current as possible just so you can be ahead of the next person. So uh, these are the three companies. Just to give you a little background of how I selected them, uh, we'll start with AMD. I'm going to shrink me down. Whoops. Don't want that one. We want this one. We're going to shrink me down a little bit just so you can... I see the notes that I have. What's going on here? Here we go. Let's shrink it down. Hopefully that's good. That should be pretty good. Okay. So, uh, just a real brief reason for how I got to these ones. Uh, we'll start with AMD because that's the big one. Uh, AMD, I came across them mainly for because I saw Facebook, or soon to be called Meta, uh, chose them as their server processor in its data centers. That's the first bullet point we have here. Uh, also, you're going to notice this. This 
I'm a few weeks behind here. I've done uh, the research up through today, but because I have all this research kind of in the backlogs, I wanted to make sure I shared it too, just so uh, we can all kind of be aware of what's been going on over the past month. Um, once again, I said I would do a weekly recap, but because I'm, I have a couple weeks in the backlog, I'm gonna try to get those out as soon as possible, just so we're up to date. And then hopefully the, the vision is once I get up to date, then I can, you know, have this weekly video where it's just a recap of those stocks. And it's, you know, just like it says right now, December 11th, that was week ending December 11th. So, you know, hopefully in the future, we'll use today's example. It's currently January 1st, which is a Saturday. I would like to share this January 1st recap show on January 1st, you know, weekend of January 1st on January 1st. That, that is the plan. That's the goal. But because I have a couple weeks in the backlogs, I want to catch everyone up. Uh, so once again, let's shift back to how I got these companies. So AMD, uh, the main reason how they got into my head was I saw Meta Platforms, chose them as their service for as their server processor in its data center. So, and as this first article goes into detail, it says this could unlock a massive opportunity for the chip maker since the social media giant has decided to invest billions of dollars into the metaverse initiative in the coming years, including some $10 billion this year alone. $10 billion into AMD. I, I know that's not what it said, but that, that just shows how much money that they're going to put into it. So AMD, before this, was making tons of money and now they're gonna have a new investor as big as Facebook, uh, who I believe is very close to a trillion dollar company. So this is very big news for AMD. The second article, which also goes into why I came across AMD and wanted to take a chance on them, was their business with Tesla, another huge company, a company that has passed that trillion dollar mark. Not sure if they are today, but at one point they were just recently. The chip maker is finding traction in the automotive market as well. Electric vehicle giant Tesla is reporting, reportedly using AMD's chips to power the in-car infotainment system in its Model Y lineup in China. It is worth noting that AMD's chips were already inside the infotainment systems of the Model S and Model X vehicles. Thanks to the addition of new factories, the potential increase in Tesla's production capacity is likely to further increase AMD's addressable market in the automotive space. So what I took away from this article was, number one, they're dealing with Tesla, which is everyone knows them, everyone's talking about Tesla, but more so that if they're dealing with Tesla, the biggest EV maker right now, what's stopping them from branching out to another electric vehicle company, whether it be Lucid, Neo, uh, Lee Automotive, uh, or even a uh, domestic type company such as Ford. They, if their product is good enough for Tesla, it could easily be good enough for those other companies and they could grab hold of more market share in that sector. So I loved hearing that. So that's how I got into AMD. I'll share these other articles here in just a minute. I got to click an AMDC or I'm sorry, MDC. I found those two just by doing a quick Google search. There was one of the YouTubers that I watched that basically said there's an opportunity out there for small cap uh, companies. These two mark, these two companies are small cap, uh, at least in my opinion. They're, I don't think they qualify under certain definitions, but if we go to Yahoo Finance, you'll see MDC is a little under a $4 billion market cap. And then we have Click here. That's their full name. I'm not gonna even try to say it, but they're also under a $4 billion market cap. So they're smaller. And here's just an example of AMD, $173 billion. So you can see how small they are compared to AMD, who's not even the biggest company in the semiconductor industry. So, that just kind of shows that it is relative. 
uh, I'm, so depending on what your definition of small cap company is, uh, maybe they qualify, they do for me, but maybe for you, they're too large. But for me and this channel, they're small cap. So I chose these two because of that reason was number one. Uh, the second was I then tried to find companies with a very low PE ratio. So click here has 10 and a half PE ratio. So 10.5 times and then MDC currently they have a 7.3 PE ratio, which is very good. The next thing that I looked at is I wanted a company that had a low PE ratio, but also a high EPS earnings per share. MDC 7.65. So they're making a lot. Uh, they're making a lot of money. So they should, uh, it shouldn't take long to uh, get back that initial investment. And that's why I liked MDC. A bonus for MDC also is they're a dividend company. So it should get the money back even faster. Click, similar story, pretty high EPS here. Should get return on investment very quickly. Another bonus here for them, they also have a dividend. So more money quickly. Uh, and then that, that pretty much sold it for me. I did a couple uh, financial equations uh, to kind of confirm that they hit this uh, uh, mark that I'm looking for of a projected 25% growth, if not higher. They both met that mark in my uh, financial uh, forecasting. So I stuck with them. And I'll share that with you probably in another video. Uh, but for now, it hit all those marks. And then whenever I dug into them a little bit deeper, uh, and by that I just mean I looked at some of these financial, uh, what the what the paid financial analysts are saying, and so right here for click, you can see we have uh, short term, mid term, and long term bullish in all three. So everyone thinks that this company is going to go up. It's currently undervalued, another great sign for us, and an estimated return of ninety seven percent next year. So that to me is promising it you know i i said 25 percent if or higher they're at 97 percent. so that should be very good you can see they're on a pretty uh they're on an incline here so that should be good over the past year so this should be very good for us i'm not sure if this i think that's up to date i don't know the dates are let me see one day Right. Okay. So the, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is 2021. Okay. Gotcha. So you can see they're, they're growing pretty quick, even over last year. MDC, very similar story, short term, midterm, long term, all bullish patterns here. Also undervalued and they have an estimated return of 69%. So very good there. Here you can see they actually kind of peaked back in the first quarter end of first quarter, uh, March, April territory and then they kind of hit a slump uh, not sure why I, I didn't really start following them until early December uh, but from early December they have kind of picked it up a little bit which is good uh, and then just to we'll just share AMD since I'm here anyway uh, mark cap 173 P ratio is pretty high so I wasn't looking at that for this company as I mentioned but they are profitable which I like that Short term bullish, long mid term bullish, long term. I believe as more news comes out, I believe that's going to change into a bullish pattern too, but we'll see. And then another promising sign was it's undervalued, even after experienced this high growth over the past really just six months, this second half of the year, very high growth. Uh, and yet they still are saying it's undervalued, 44% estimated return, and I'm hoping for 25. I'm, I'm hoping for 25. More is better, but that's all I'm hoping for. Uh, so once again, these are just the notes that I picked up from week ending December 11th of 2021. Uh, so to continue on with AMD, uh, analysts are currently expecting AMD's earnings to grow at an annual rate of 35% for the 
for the next five years. So that makes it a long-term good investment, which I like that. Not sure if I'll keep it long-term, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably keep buying into it as time passes. Uh, another note is Allied Market Research estimates that the global in-car infotainment system market could be worth $37.5 billion by 2028. So that's taking into account all EVs as far as I as far as I can tell. So that's Tesla, Neo, Lee, like all of them combined could be 37.5 billion. And uh, that's just in about six years time. So regardless, it's a multi-billion dollar opportunity for AMD to go after. And if they can take up say 25% of that market, that's $10 billion going into them. And for a company that's currently has a market cap of, uh, what was it, 170, 173 billion? I mean, that, that's a lot of money. Not sure if that uh, would be $10 billion annually. I assume so. So that, that's a lot of money right there. Uh, good potential for revenue growth. Another article that I saw that I wanted to share was given that AMD is trading at 44 times earnings right now. It's a discount compared to where it was before, and where it was before it was 114 as a P, as its PE ratio. So investors looking to get into this growth stock for the long haul may want to take a closer look at this chip maker now, because it could be a very good opportunity for them. And to give you just a little bit of background, Nvidia, one of its uh, closest competitors, currently has a PE ratio of in the 90s. Uh, somewhere in the 90s, maybe high 80s. So it's nearly double what AMD is at this time. Uh, the last thing was current president and CEO of AMD, uh, Lisa Su, she recently sold $125,000, or I'm sorry, 125,000 shares of AMD back on December 7th. And the word is more so focused on it's just to pay taxes or to uh, generate some income for them. Uh, it's not that they don't believe in the company or anything like that. It's just uh, they made a lot of money, so now they need to pay the taxes, uh, sort of like Elon Musk was doing. Similar story. That, that's how I'm interpreting that. Uh, the next company, we have Click. Click, so analysts are expecting them to post earnings of $1.92 per share. This is marked year-over-year -year growth of over 123%. And then there's this company that Yahoo Finance references a lot called Zach's Consensus. Or Zach, um, I think it's just Zach's actually. So Zach's Consensus estimates for revenue is projecting net sales of 460 million, which is up 71% from a year ago's period. So it's a very, it's growing very quickly. Uh, another thing is Click currently is has a Ford PE of 11. So this was this is older news. Uh, it says 11, but we just looked and it was, what, 10 and a half? So it's actually gone down, the price has gone down. Um, it's industry average is about 14.79. We'll just round up to 15. So you're getting them at a deal, as far as I can see, in terms of industry, plus their high growth. You, you saw that by their year-over-year uh, -year growth. And finally, similar story to AMD, their president and CEO, uh, Fusen Ernie Chen, sold 60,000 shares for $4.1 million. So it's a very similar story, I'm guessing, just to pay off taxes, sort of like Elon Musk again. And then finally, we have MDC, no news there. Uh, this will be a, you'll see a similar pattern to this. AMD is gonna take up the bulk, which I think most people are going to come to hear about AMD's news anyway. And then click, you'll probably get an article or two. Uh, in this case, there was three, but you'll probably get one or two articles about that um, each week. And then MDC, it's hit or miss. There's, there's not really much to share there. AMD is going to be the main focus. And hopefully over time, I can get better. I can share more insights, uh, maybe do a little more a uh, little more uh, technical analysis in terms of monitoring these stocks and just looking at trend lines and, and what have you. 
But that's kind of where we're at today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you next week. Uh, have a great day. Bye.